Okay, so are you ready to like fire up those Commodore 64s? Mm -hmm. Because we are headed straight back to 1984 for a deep dive into, well, you guessed it, Impossible Mission. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. I know, right? Just hearing that voice, it's like instant chills. It's iconic. But why Impossible Mission? Why now? Well, for starters, this game, it wasn't just a hit back in the day. It still holds up, even now. It's true. And we wanted to kind of dissect that, figure out what makes it so special. You know, so we dug up all sorts of goodies, old reviews, developer interviews. The design docs even, right? The, yeah, the works. So we could really get into the nitty gritty of what makes Impossible Mission tick. And maybe, just maybe, we'll figure out why it still has this hold on us all these years later. It's a journey I'm excited for. Me too. But for any of our listeners who maybe missed this one. Oh, the poor soul. Let's set the stage a bit, shall we? So picture this. It's 1984. You've got your Commodore 64 hooked up to the TV. You slide in this game, Impossible Mission, and boom, suddenly you're Agent 4125. Best agent name ever. Right. It's so good. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, well, it's right there in the title. Stop the evil Professor Elvin Atombender. Classic evil genius name. From launching a global nuclear meltdown. High stakes. The highest. So you're not just playing a game, you're saving the world. No pressure or anything. Right. And here's the thing about Impossible Mission. It wasn't content with just being another platformer. Oh no, this game. It threw everything into the mix. Seriously. Action, adventure, puzzles. They were ahead of their time, I'll tell you that. Okay, but how does that actually play out? Like, yeah. what are you doing in the game? Imagine this. You're dropped into a Tom Bender's lair. 32 rooms. 32. Each one a potential death trap. Sounds delightful. And get this, the layout. Hmm. Completely randomized. Hold on, randomized. Back in 1984. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Nobody was doing that back then. That's what made it so brilliant. Every time you played, it was a totally new experience. Talk about replay value. Right. You had to think on your feet, adapt to each new challenge. So you're saying this is like the OG woguelike. In a way, yeah. Okay, that's blowing my mind a little. Well, hold on. We're just getting started. There's more. Oh, yeah. Remember, you're on a mission, and it's not just about surviving a Tom Bender's funhouse of doom. It's about stopping the nuclear apocalypse. Exactly. So what's the plan? How do we stop this madman? Well, you've got to find the pieces of his master password. Okay, so it's a scavenger hunt. The deadliest scavenger hunt in history. And where are these password pieces hiding? Everywhere and nowhere. Desks, bookshelves, even behind loose bricks in the wall. You're kidding. Nope. Outfender. He's a tricky one. So not only do you have to navigate these death trap rooms, but you've also got to be incredibly observant. Talk about a test of your skills. Oh, and did I mention the robots? The robots, right. Yeah. Like those creepy jerky robots that still haunt my dreams. Those are the ones. Even thinking about them now gives me the creeps. They're not just there for show, though. They're out to get you. Each one with its own movement pattern, its own attack style. Wait, seriously? They weren't all the same. Oh, no, that would be way too easy. Remember how we talked about randomized rooms? Yeah. Was... Well, the robots were randomized, too, so you never knew what to expect. Talk about a nightmare. So not only are you trying to solve this world-ending puzzle, but you've got these, like, unpredictable robotic menaces yeah. lurking around every corner. Was there at least, like, a weapon? Could you fight back? Not in the traditional sense, no. You're kidding. You had to be smarter than them, quicker than them. So it's a game of wits, then. Survival of the fittest, or at least the most agile. Okay, I'm starting to see why they called it impossible mission. Mm. This is intense. Agility and strategy, my friend. Because even if you managed to dodge a robot or two, Big if. you still had those rooms to deal with. Right, the rooms themselves were like obstacle courses. Precisely. Platforms, ladders, those infamous disappearing floors. Don't remind me about those. <laughs> One minute you're running along, feeling good about yourself. The next, you're plummeting into the abyss. Classic Atom Bender. And let's not forget about that timer. Talk about adding insult to injury. Every death, every misstep, 10 minutes closer to global meltdown. It's brutal. It's like the game was designed to give you an anxiety attack. Maybe that was a Tom Bender's plan all along. Oh, that's good. Psychological warfare. He was a genius. So you got to give him that. Okay, fair point. Yeah. But let's say, hypothetically, you're a gaming god. You've mastered the robot ballet. You've navigated those treacherous rooms with the grace of a parkour expert. You even managed to outrun the apocalypse clock. Now you've got all the password pieces. What then? Yeah. Then comes the real challenge. 
the password puzzle itself. Right. Because it wasn't enough to just find the pieces. You had to decipher them, put them together in the right order. It was a stroke of genius, really. Remember your trusty PDA? Oh, yeah. High tech, even for a game set in the future. Right. Well, that PDA was your key to cracking the code. Okay, I'm intrigued. Walk me through it. So you've got these password pieces, right? Right. But they're not just handed to you on a silver platter. They're flipped, rotated, even mirror. You're kidding. Nope. It's like a digital jigsaw puzzle from hell. And you have to solve it with that doomsday clock ticking away. Talk <laughs> about pressure. Did the game at least give you a little help? Like a hint system or something. Funny you should mention that. Remember that modem we talked about? Oh, yeah. The built-in PDA modem. Cutting edge tech. Well, that wasn't just for show. Don't tell me. <sighs> it was a hint hotline. You got it. No way. That's amazing. But wait, there's got to be a catch. There's always a catch. Hit me with it. Using that modem, it cost you. Cost you what? Precious floppy disk space? Time, my friend. Two minutes. Gone. Ouch. Two minutes could be the difference between saving the world and, well, you know. Exactly. Talk about a tough decision. <laughs> oh, you're sweating over this password, the clock's ticking down, and you've got to decide. Risk it all for a hint or trust your gut and those scrambled code fragments. It's what makes impossible missions so compelling. High stakes, high pressure, high rewards. Speaking of rewards, have we talked about the voice acting yet? Oh, you know, we can't go any further without discussing the voice. Professor Atombender's digitized taunts. Another visitor. See, chills. It's iconic. And to think it almost didn't happen. Wait, what? We almost lived in a world without Atombender's menacing voice? Okay, spill the tea. What happened? Well, you got to remember, this was 1984. Digitized speech in video games. Practically unheard of. Right. Most games were all bleeps and bloops back then. Exactly. But the developers of Impossible Mission, they were ambitious. They wanted to create something truly groundbreaking, immersive. And they definitely pulled it off. Yeah. But how? What kind of sorcery did they use back then? It was cutting edge tech, actually. They partnered with a company called Electronic Speech Systems. Electronic Speech Systems. Gadgy. And they were pioneers in speech synthesis. Imagine recording an actor's voice and then using this process to essentially compress it, digitize it, make it all work within the limited memory of the Commodore 64. That's incredible. They were pushing the boundaries of what was possible. They were taking a gamble, for sure. A gamble that paid off big time. I mean, let's be honest. The voice acting itself, it's a little much. A little over the top, even for an evil genius. Just a tad, but that's part of its charm, right? so deliciously cheesy, so memorable. It's iconic. Nobody who's heard it can ever forget it. Okay, but let's talk about the passwords themselves for a second. Were those just random strings of letters the developers threw together? Or was there some method to the madness? Remember how we said there were eight possible passwords? Yeah, eight different ways to save the world. Well, those passwords, they weren't random at all. Get out. They weren't. Nope. They were real words, actual English words. You're blowing my mind right now. It's a small detail, but it adds this whole other layer to the game. It's like they were testing your vocabulary while also trying to give you a heart attack. Exactly. Multitasking at its finest. Impossible mission. The game that makes you smarter even as it's stressing you out. They don't make them like they used to. Speaking of which, the name itself, Impossible Mission. So fitting. Was that always the plan? Or do they have other titles in mind? You know, for a game as iconic as Impossible Mission, its origins are surprisingly murky. Murky. You're killing me. Give me the juicy details. Unfortunately, the exact details of how they landed on Impossible Mission are lost to time. No. Say it isn't so. But it's safe to assume they probably went through a whole bunch of options. Oh, I bet they did. A Tom Bender's Revenge. Robot Rampage. We can only imagine the brainstorming sessions. But in the end, they landed on Impossible Mission. And it just works. It's perfect. It's catchy. It's intriguing. And let's be real, it perfectly sums up the whole experience. No arguments here. Yeah. The Impossible Mission, it wasn't content with just being a Commodore 64 legend. Yeah. This game had ambitions. It wanted to take on the world. And take on the world it did. But we'll dive into the legacy of Impossible Mission right after this quick break. All right, so Impossible Mission, this game from, what, 1984, it wasn't content with just being a one-hit wonder. Oh, no. It went on to inspire, well, pretty much an entire generation of game designers. It's true. Impossible Mission, it really pushed the boundaries of what games could be. Okay, so we've talked about, like, the randomized levels, the puzzles, that timer. But looking back now, it's crazy to think 
these things that seem so normal now in so many games. Yeah. I, back then they were revolutionary. Impossible Mission was way ahead of its time. So it's like this weird thing where it's a classic, but it also feels kind of modern at the same time. Exactly. It's like it laid the groundwork for entire genres. Like what? Give me an example. We'll take roguelikes, for instance. Roguelikes. Okay, I'm with you. So much of what defines that genre, the randomly generated levels, the whole permadeath thing. The need to just like adapt on the fly. Exactly. Impossible Mission was doing all of that back in 84. Mind blown. Again. It's funny, right? This game that came out when we were practically, what, still using floppy disks? Don't remind it. It feels just as relevant today as it did back then. Totally. And it's not just the individual pieces, right? It's how it all fits together. You're talking about the atmosphere. Yeah. That feeling of constant tension. Like you're never truly safe. Not even for a second. The Tominger wouldn't have it any other way. And those hidden rooms. Talk about adding to the mystery. I remember like combing through every level, convinced I'd miss something. Me too. I spent hours looking for secret passages, hidden clues. It was all part of the fun though, right? Totally. It made the world feel so much bigger than it actually was. And speaking of which, can we talk about the level design for a second? Mm. We're talking about a Commodore 64 game here, people. Yeah. But those environments, even now, they hold up. They're really well designed. The way they use like verticality in those multi-screen rooms. It created such a sense of depth. Exactly. It felt know. way more advanced than most other games at the time. It's a good reminder that good design is timeless, really. So true. Impossible Mission Man. What a game. What a legacy. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the gameplay to the tech to a Tom Bender's, well, unique vocal stylings. It's been a wild ride through gaming history. Another visitor. Stay a while. Stay forever. Sure. Shills. Every time. <laughs> But on that note, I think we've reached the end of our mission. For now, anyway, we'll leave you all to ponder the mysteries of Impossible Mission. Until next time, stay curious, keep exploring, and never underestimate the power of a good challenge. Game on.